Okay, I see Sean coming in. So I now see we're we're streaming. Morning, Sean. So can we start right at nine o'clock? Thank you. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Committee of Adjustment meeting for Monday, April 8th, 2024, where if you don't have clouds, you're going to see a really good eclipse. Um, uh, chair Edwards is away today, so I am filling in for him as acting chair. And uh, to that, I think we'll get going. Um, you're agreeing to be recorded, and uh, this will be public um, in the public realm. Uh, if you're joining by Zoom or you're speaking here. So I just wanted to let you know that. So my first order of business is to call the meeting to um, order. So um, be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment Agenda, not the agenda, where is my... Okay, I'm calling the meeting to order at 9 a.m. A little rusty here. <laughs> and now, um, do we have... Uh, the adoption of the agenda. So be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment Agenda dated April 8th, 2024 be adopted. All in favor? That carries. Okay, thank you for that. And um, and then do I have any declaration of conflict of interest? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Ward to say a few things. And if I missed anything in the beginning, Chelsea, please pick it up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is required that I make a few statements, then I will explain the hearing procedures. This electronic hearing is being held in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act. The members of the Committee of Adjustment present are Barb Bridgman, Ruth Ann Brown, Lisa Grogan Green, Joe Quinn, and Sean Stokes. I can confirm we have quorum and that senior staff and planning staff are present. Public input on this April 8th agenda was invited at the following email address planning at muskokalakes.ca. Now I will explain the hearing procedures. The planner will provide an explanation and the purpose of the application the date the notice was circulated, and planning staff's comments. All internal and external submissions have been provided to committee members by Friday, April 5th, 2024. The planner will present any submissions received after this date. The committee will hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to add any information or to substantiate their proposal. Please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. The committee will hear from those in support of the application and those in opposition to the application. Again, please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. Presentations are limited to five minutes unless otherwise permitted by the committee. If you are here to speak on an application electronically, please wait until after the planner presents the relevant application to raise your hand in Zoom. If you are here to speak on an application in person, when asked, please raise your hand, and when you are recognized by the chair, please approach the podium, turn on the microphone, and remain at the podium while you state your comments for recording purposes. The committee will hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent to respond to any questions or concerns raised. The committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions have a debate on the application, and make a decision based on the information presented at the hearing. Please note that the effect of written and oral submissions on decisions for consent and minor variances, along with the reasons for minor variance decisions, are both required under the Planning Act, and the motions are pre-populated with standard wording. However, the committee may decide to add reasons and or effects to the standard wording after voting on a decision. Motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to expedite the meeting and are automatically written in the positive to assist in completing decisions as opposed to writing out each resolution. This does not in any way mean an application is going to be approved. When it is time to vote, members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a verbal vote shall be recorded. This is not considered a recorded vote. 
It must be noted that the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in the discussion. There is a 20-day appeal period from the date of the decision. Building permits are not available until after the appeal period and if no appeals are received. Lastly, please take down the pink notice signs that were posted on your property to advertise today's meeting. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you, Ms. Ward. All right, moved by Member Stokes, seconded by Member Grogan Green. Be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment Minutes dated March 11th, 2024 be adopted and approved as circulated. Are there any changes that anybody would like to see? All right, then all in favor. That carries. Okay, so we will have our first um, uh, hearing for uh, consent applications. Um, Ms. Beamish, I believe this is you, and Ms. Beamish has joined us on a contract basis, and this is her first meeting with the Committee of Adjustments, so welcome, and um, I'm sure you'll enjoy your time with us. Uh, thank you, Chair Bridgman. The first application to be heard is consent application B-10-24 ML in the name of Wolfond and Reichert. The retained lot is known municipally as 1379 Ross Trevor Road, unit number two. I would direct committee's attention to the consent sketches on page 32 and 33 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to grant an easement to Bell Canada for the relocation of telecommunications infrastructure. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 17 days in advance of this meeting, and four comments have been received to date. Comments were received from Nick Schneider, the town's chief building official, Sandy Boss, the township's chief, uh, the township's septic ex inspector, Ken Becking, the director of operational services and planning staff from the District of Muskoka, all stating no objection to the application. Uh, staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved subject to the standard conditions of consent. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, would the applicant or someone representing the applicant be here to speak on behalf of that? No one is here in attendance to speak to that. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who wants to speak for this application? No. Anyone against this application? No. Okay, so um, committee, I will open it up to you. Is there anyone who has any questions, concerns? All right, not seen any, I'm going to read the motion. Uh, moved by member Quinn, seconded by member Brown, be it resolved that consent uh, be granted to application B slash 10 slash 24 slash ML, Wolfond and Rick and Rickart provided the following condition is fulfilled. One, that a satisfactory registrable uh, description of the severed lot easement be submitted to the township along with a registered copy of the reference plan. This application conforms with the requirements of the Comp Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 2014-14 as amended, the township official plan and the district municipality of Muskoka official plan. Pursuant to subsection 41 of section 53 of the Planning Act, all conditions imposed must be fulfilled within two years from the date of the sent sending of the notice of decision or the applications are deemed to be refused. It is a requirement that all conditions imposed be fulfilled prior to the granting of this consent and that the giving by the secretary treasurer of the certificate provided or in subsection 42 of section 53 of the Planning Act RSO 1990, Chapter P13, as amended. Okay, that's the first time I've read anything like that, but there we go. Uh, any questions? Any, any other concerns? All right, all in favor? That carries. 
All right. So our next application is Saunders and Ms. Beamish, you are up again. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. The next application to be heard is Minor Variance Application A-98-21 in the name of Saunders. The subject lands are known municipally as 1151 Roberts Bay Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 51 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to construct a new swim dock. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 18 days in advance of this meeting and four comments have been received to date. Comments were received from Ken Becking, the Township's Director of Operational Services, Nick Schneider, the Township's Chief Building Official, both stating no objection to the application. Comments were also received from Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, providing emergency fire response times and recommending that the owners review the Fire Smart Homeowner's Manual to understand how treatments to the property influence wildfire spread. A letter of objection was received from Al Moran after the circulation of comments to committee. Mr. M Moran has requested that the letter be read in full. Uh, this letter contains photos which staff will screen share. This communication is intended to register a formal objection to the subject application and oppose the recommendation by staff to Committee of Adjustment to approve this variance. So the history, the property owner has subsequent to purchasing this property converted an existing covered wet slip to an entertainment area in defiance of the TML in effect bylaws. See enclosed exhibits A, B, and C, and thus created a need for additional docking not permitted in accordance with TMLOP and comprehensive bylaws in effect. Exhibit A, Exhibit B, and then Exhibit C. Uh, the applicant has constructed on the subject property a storage building, which has all the characteristics of a second cottage on the lot and the applied for a dock could serve the current or future property owner as a self-contained rental property with private dock, all subject to bylaw enforcement and related challenges. The property owner entered into a site plan agreement, uh, SPA-84-18 in December 2018, which states that all vegetation within 50 feet of the shoreline shall remain <clears throat> in a natural state and the staff report acknowledges that this natural waterfront exists and no access to the proposed dock is shown on the application. Whereas the staff report outlines the justification for limiting the width of docks to 25% of lot frontage up to a maximum of 75 feet. And whereas for approximately 10 years, TML has enforced this policy and granting a 14% relief of the policy as recommended will by precedent attract a flood of applications and whereas the maximum of 75 feet applies to properties with much larger waterfront <clears throat> than the subject property and therefore the adjacent township right away is not a consideration to this application. And whereas the TML official plan permits an exemption to the limiting of waterfront structures to 75 feet, reference section B13.4.E, Larger residential properties with severance potential as determined by the township, which shall be limited to 25% per minimum waterfront frontage of potential lot. Whereas the staff report establishes that the subject property does not qualify for severance and in fact would not qualify for lot severance should TML choose to sell the adjacent public access to the applicant. And therefore the exemption applied for cannot meet the test for exemption as permitted by section B13.4.E and therefore should be denied by COA. And whereas the staff report states that 
It is agreed that the proposed swim dock will have a modest impact on the natural form of the shoreline. Notwithstanding, there is no restriction that the dock will not be used to accommodate watercraft on lifts, and these concerns are addressed below. And whereas the staff report has indicated that the structures on the property are well buffered slash screened against lakeside views, we respectfully disagree and refer you to Exhibit D. Understandably, lake views were not possible at the time of the site visit. All major structures, including cottage, boathouse, sauna, and storage building, are not screened by natural elements and are prominent and on the shoreline and are extensively illuminated at nighttime, including the storage building. Concerns. Should COA consider approval of the application, the following matters should be addressed. One, approval by COA of this application will set a precedent with unintended consequences as it can be anticipated that property owners and developers will demand similar reliefs from in effect comprehensive bylaws for previously constructed compliant docks constructed to a maximum length of 50 feet per in effect bylaws. Two, the minimal impact of a low profile swim dock referred to in the staff report only applies if it is agreed that such swim dock will not have adjacent watercraft lifts with or without canopies, such structures are considered as part of the limits of structures on the waterfront and have not been included in the submission. And number three, a restriction on the land access serving proposed dock must be addressed. The TMLOP under section A7.3 addresses excessive development. Excessive development activities have implications on vegetation removal along the shoreline as well as water quality. Policies for buffering along the waterfront are imperative to ensure the natural heritage features are protected and the character is respected. The in effect site plan agreement SPA-84-18 referred to above states, all vegetation within 50 feet of the shoreline remain in a natural state. No relief has been sought from this provision. COA should restrict pathways within the buffer zone and prohibit a shoreline walkway of approximately 200 feet connecting the swim dock to primary dock. The staff report acknowledges that the current shoreline appears to be in a natural or revegetated state and consideration could be given to restricting an access to proposed dock through the 50 foot buffer zone to be five foot in width maximum and perpendicular to the shore within the buffer zone to the shoreline. This minimizing of impacts of access to additional remote waterfront structures was proposed by Planscape as an environmental consideration on an application ZBA-28-14 wherein a second structure on the waterfront was proposed at a considerable distance along the shore from the primary dock. In summary, it is my position that the in effect TML, OP, and comprehensive zoning bylaws limit the structures on waterfront properties to protect the environment and water quality of our lakes, and this represents good planning practices for the future of Muskoka. I would ask that this communication be read into the public record and that COA consider the matters raised in passing judgment on this application. Res oh, respectfully and submitted without prejudice, Al Morin. Hey, Miss Beamish, are you you are done? I assume. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Great. I'll just continue with the presentation if that's okay. Yes. That. Thank you. <laughs> So the proposed variance is summarized as shown on the screen. This table was included in the circulation materials and can be found in the agenda package. Um, staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Okay, thank you very much. Um, would there be anyone? I, I think I saw Mr. Allen, there he is. Welcome, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Chairman. On behalf of the owner. Yes, Thanks, good go good morning. Um, I did have my camera on there for a minute. Um, my name is Ryan Allen. I am the planner assisting Mr. Grams Graham Saunders with his variance application today. I'm a registered professional planner with Planscape 104 Kimberly Ave, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1Z8. Thank you, Ms. Beamish, for providing a thorough overview of the proposed variants, uh, including some photos uh, of the shoreline and existing development. The subject property is at 1151 Roberts Bay Road. 
and it has an existing 75 feet of dock width that's associated with the current two-story boathouse. The owner is proposing a new 12-foot wide swim dock that is well separated from the existing boathouse. And I would note the majority of the swim dock is only eight feet wide. There's a bit of a hammerhead top to it that extends the width to 12, resulting in a total cumulative dock width on this property of 87 feet. The property does have a substantial amount of existing bylaw frontage at over uh, 200, 620 feet. The property also abuts uh, two road allowances that lead to water that are currently closed. That adds over 66 feet of frontage on either side of the lot. If we were talking about the bylaw frontages, including the road allowances, there's over 827 feet of width. Looking at the straight line frontages, there's over 844 feet of uh, shoreline width, resulting in 14% of cumulative dock width along the bylaw frontage of the property and approximately 10% uh, width of the shoreline of the property plus the road allowances. The bylaw requires a minimum 30 foot side yard setback. This dock is proposed at a 40 foot side yard setback. Uh, and that's in addition to the 66 foot setback, uh, 66 foot width, excuse me, of the road allowance, resulting in more than 100 feet of separation from the neighboring property owner. I would note that uh, the neighboring property owner did not provide any comments of objection uh, related to a dock, uh, a new dock coming closer to their property. Um, there is an official plan policy that does consider increased cumulative dock widths on property that have severance potential. This lot does not have um, sufficient lot area to be divided, but it does have sufficient frontage. Um, from my perspective, frontage is king when it comes to the appearance of uh, development on the shoreline, in particular docks and boathouses. Uh, lot lines are not visible uh, as they would be in, in towns and villages. So the, the overall appearance of the amount of shoreline is the most critical consideration. Um, and in my view, and I think in staff's view, uh, we've recognized that there is significant amount of shoreline width and the small additional amount of, of dock will not change the character or the visual appearance of built form on this property. As well, I was also agree with staff that the uh, dock is generally uh, low in profile, close to the water, the water's top, uh, the water elevation, uh, uh, similar, dissimilar to a, a boathouse or boat port that has structure that rises up above the surface of the water. Um, there has been some previous uh, zoning compliance uh, matters on this property, as as Mr. Moran has highlighted for the committee. Um, this application was submitted back in 2021. When I attended the property, I observed uh, concerns related to the use of uh, some of the structures on the property. Subsequently, application was put in hold. Uh, subsequently, the township then laid orders on the property uh, and was enforcing the bylaw. Uh, Mr. Saunders spent um, a better part of a year uh, working through the bylaw enforcement process. Um, there was a storage building on the property that was uh, being used as a dwelling uh, during the reconstruction or renovation, excuse me, of the existing cottage, as well as a boathouse that had um, a lower level use that wasn't used in compliance. Those issues have been addressed. Um, the applicant is now fully in compliant with the bylaw. Um, we would hope today that the committee would be willing to uh, support this application as recommended by staff. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Would anybody else like to speak uh, for this application? No. Thanks, uh, Chelsea. Anyone uh, against this application? No. Okay, thank you. Um, just before I turn this over to committee, I see Mr. Kennedy is here. So can we just verify, Mr. Kennedy, that this property is now in compliance with our bylaws? Good morning, committee. Um, sorry for the distraction. Uh, I will confirm at this point, we do not have any current complaints or uh, open bylaw files on the property. Um, as Mr. Allen had said, uh, we were dealing with the property um, the better part of the last couple of years, and uh, the last uh, the last time I think it was described in our um, 
our other committee meeting that uh, he had been charged and convicted for a $5,000 penalty for the dwelling. Um, to my knowledge, the boathouse is in compliance. I haven't had a complaint in a couple of years in regards to that. Um, and I just want to say that um, in respect to the photos that were in uh, Mr. Moran's uh, submission, I, I have not seen those. Um, so I'm not uh, not aware that if that boathouse is back in non-compliance or not. Okay, thank you very much. And I, I thought the giggling in the background was lovely. Um, so, uh, committee, any questions, any comments? Um, Member Stokes? All right, there we go. Um, yeah, I have a, a question. Uh, am I still muted? No. Uh, I have a question um, on the bylaw and uh, perhaps Mr. Kennedy's comments cover it, but it has to do with regard to, if we look at the site plan, <clears throat> beside the boathouse, there's a sauna. And I just like to understand, it looks like it's very close to the water, water line. I just like to understand, because I, uh, or I could get an explanation. <clears throat> I think the bylaw says that a pump house and sauna may, shall have a minimum setback of 4.6 meters, 15 feet from the high water mark. I'm just wondering, is that in compliance with the bylaw? Mr. Kennedy? Uh, through the chair, uh, to be quite honest with you, I don't recall a sauna. Um, actually, no, sorry, to be quite honest. Uh, there is a sauna that is next to the boathouse. Um, I do have photos of it from a previous inspection. Uh, but as far as the distance to the waterfront, I, I don't know. I can't confirm whether or not that's in compliance. I've, I've never dealt with that uh, side of the property. Okay, thanks. I, I didn't know whether that had been part of the issue that was resolved in the past. Uh, through you, um, we have our um, manager of planning that wishes to speak. Okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Sharp. Good morning, uh, Chair Bridgman, and good morning, members of committee. I just uh, wanted to clarify that in 2018, the township issued a site plan approval on this property, and the sauna was indicated at that time. Um, and the sauna ha um, has not been an issue on, on the property to date. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from committee? Um, member Grogan Green. I just wanted to take a closer look, um, if you don't mind, at Exhibit C and D, because I, I, we passed that fairly quickly. I wasn't able to read the writing on Exhibit C and hardly got a look at Exhibit D. Uh, this was from um, Mr. Um, Moran's letter? Think, yes. Yeah. Okay. And also, I, I missed hearing Al Moran's uh, address, too. I assume he's a neighbor, but I, I really, I didn't get that. Uh, can somebody clarify Mr. Moran's address? There it is, 11. Okay, thank you. Is that long enough, Member Grogan Green? Yes, I, I have some comments. I mean, I, I didn't really get a chance to look at Exhibit C, but I did take a look at Exhibit D. And it seems to me that at Committee of Adjustment, we make decisions based on you know the shape of the lot. Um, I, ju I just look at this enormous boathouse and I say to myself, why do they need another dock and why should we approve that? And I do really agree with this idea that it sets a precedent. I mean, everybody out there, 
that has 75 feet and a decent amount of shoreline, why not have a 12 foot dock somewhere else? I, I just think it's too much. It's just excessive. And I, I really question what the heck is going on with that storage building. I, you know, I know it's not relevant to us and apparently according to an inspection, uh, they're now in compliance, but how are they in compliance? Are, is that full of storage equipment? I highly doubt it. Um, uh, I, well, so let me let me get Mr. Kennedy to answer that first, because that was part of the ongoing um, negotiations with the township. Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I think to clarify, um, these photos, while I don't know, there's no time stamp or date stamp on these, based on my inspections on the property, um, the photos appear to be like even before bylaw got involved, at least when I was here. Um, so I do recognize the setup of that boathouse in the first story. It looks quite similar to what I saw when we first investigated it. Um, and and to date, I, I, as far as I'm aware, the owner has taken out all the couches and all the TVs and whatnot. Um, so as far as I am aware, that boathouse is in full compliance. In regards to the storage building, as I said, um, we have dealt with that building on multiple occasions in the past couple of years. Um, the latest one did result in uh, in charges uh, to the provincial court, uh, and Mr. Saunders did plead guilty uh, with a $5,000 penalty uh, for those offenses. And to date, I have not had a complaint um, since that conviction was registered, uh, and I know that he did... Uh, have another application into uh, the planning committee. Uh, I believe it was last month or two months ago, uh, which was that which has been deferred um, at this point. Uh, but again, as as far as I know, um, there there are no compliance issues on the property. I haven't uh, received any complaints uh, for the better part of a year. Thank you, Amber Grogan Green. Um, are we allowed to know what the application is for? I assume not. But this is a lot of applications for a lot of different things that. You know, what, what, what else does he need? Um, Ms. Ward, uh, maybe I can ask you, is that, a, is that appropriate here? I'm not sure. Uh, Mr. Sharp will be speaking to that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sharp? Thank you, Chair Bridgman. Uh, just looking for some clarification from uh, Member Grogan Green on her specific question. I'm not clear on on what application or application she's referring to. Oh, sorry. I thought Mr. Kennedy just mentioned that there was an, another application that was submitted about a month ago on this same property. Maybe I, I misheard. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, per our staff report, um, there is an ongoing zoning bylaw amendment application related to the existing storage building. Uh, the zoning bylaw amendment application proposes to permit the buildings to be used as a recreational and leisure building and to define um, that type of building. That application was heard by planning committee and has since been deferred on the recommendation of staff due to concerns related to cumulative impacts and precedent. Uh, what I would comment with respect to this uh, application that's in front of you today, the two um, applications are separate. What's in front of you today is a proposed uh, swim dock. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other comments from committee members? Yes. Uh, Member Stokes. Um, yeah, I, I, if if committee it does approve this, um, there. First of all, there was a lot in that letter. Uh, and it's, you know, it's difficult to digest it um, all, all at once. One thing that I I tend to agree with is if this is approved, limiting the ability for boat docking at that dock as it is a swim dock um, is something that I think we should consider putting in the resolution uh, because, the, you know, concern is that there's going to be some creep here and, and uh, it'll be used as a, as a, a boat dock um, rather than just simply somewhere where people can swim in sun. Any other comments? I have a, I have a comment. Um, I, I think that, you know, sometimes we talk about precedents being set, 
um, were, were to look at every property as an individual case. Uh, this has 620 feet with the with the uh, the advantage of a short road allowance in each end. So I don't think that a 12 foot dock uh, is that predominant. Um, it's only 40 feet long, and um, I would look I would like to look at this as an individual application as opposed to setting a precedence for another application because we'd look at that application on that day and look at the surroundings and the frontage and, and what it is. And, um, and we'd, we'd vote according to that. Okay. So I'm not seeing any other comments, so I will give you my thoughts on this and it is, we are only looking at the swim dock. That's all we can really address. I do know from prior applications that have gone to the tribunal that those closed road allowances are looked at by the tribunal. I mean, the, the, the difficulty with this is our bylaws aren't really part of the big picture once it gets to a tribunal. So I believe there is certainly enough shoreline here for a 12 foot dock that is not going to have a big impact. But uh, to Member Stokes' comments, I really liked a lot of what was in Mr. Moran's letter in terms of if we can limit access to a five-foot uh, wide path perpendicular to the water, that would be great. So I'll, I will ask um, Mr. Sharp that question. And part two is that, and, and Mr. Sharp, maybe you could answer this for us too, if uh, we, you cannot stop boats from parking over there, I do not believe. But if a boat lift goes in, that is counted as shoreline coverage, and so no boat lifts would be allowed there. Am I correct, Mr. Sharp? Thank you, Chair Bridgman. I can uh, do my best to attempt to answer uh, your questions. I think with respect to um, the mooring and berthing of, of boats and uh, trying to prevent that, I think that would be something that would be quite difficult uh, to enforce. And it's not something that I would recommend um, that we do at the end of the day, the zoning bylaw defines a dock and it includes the mooring and berthing of, of boats um, with respect to, I believe Mr. Moran had raised a concern um, not so much with respect to the actual, you know, dockage or, or parking of boats, but more so the, the installation of a boat lift. Um, beside the proposed swim dock or boat lifts, I would note that the zoning bylaw defines a boat lift in the cumulative width of shoreline structures. So if uh, the applicant were to install uh, boat lifts, um, they would be uh, in contravention of the zoning bylaw if this application um, is approved. And with respect to um, the installation of, of pathways um, or a new uh, pathway, um, pathways are something that are addressed uh, through the township's um, site alteration uh, bylaw. So, so provided if a pathway is uh, to be installed in the future, provided it's installed in accordance uh, with the exceptions that are determined uh, through that bylaw, it would uh, be permitted on the property. I'd be happy to provide any further clarification um, as necessary. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sharp, does that mean you could do a shoreline walkway from the boathouse over to the dock? Yes, uh, provided again that it was done in accordance with the site alteration bylaw, um, a pathway would be permitted um, to the to the dock. I think it, it's 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 expected that uh, you know in order to access the dock that a, a pathway would be um, would be installed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, committee? Member Stokes. Yeah, just um, clarification. Uh, that was what I was concerned about was the boat lift. So if I understand then, in the event that a boat lift was installed there, uh, that would be a bylaw infraction. They would have to, uh, then uh, um, neighbors could complain and, and the bylaw could come out there. Could, would they? Could they then come to the committee to uh, ask for leave on that? Would that be their next step or rip it out? Are you, you Chair always... Bridgman? Yes, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Mr. Sharp. Through you, Chair Bridgman, uh, yeah, just to reiterate, uh, boat lift installed uh, beside 
either side or both of the proposed dock would count towards cumulative shoreline structure width, thus increasing the overall uh, width. And if this application is approved and that were to be uh, undertaken, uh, it wouldn't comply with the zoning bylaw and um, that would become an enforcement matter. And the two options to rectify that would be A, uh, to remove uh, the boat lift or boat lifts or to come back to a committee of adjustment or the township's planning committee for further relief is as a right um, enshrined in the planning act for any uh, property owner um, wishing to seek relief from, from the township zoning bylaw. Thank you. Thank you. I see Mr. Kennedy uh, has turned his camera on, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, thank you. Through the chair, just to clarify in regards to the pathway, um, our tree conservation bylaw would also apply there. He would not, the owner would not be able to uh, remove any trees in order to construct this pathway. So um, if I recall correctly, the uh, it, it is quite heavily vegetated from the, from the, I guess, the storage building to the boathouse. So I don't know if he'd be able to put one there. And um, if I recall on the on the shoreline, it is quite rocky. He might be able to do it there, but uh, it would prove pretty difficult um, to create a pathway from the boathouse over to the dock, uh, from my recollection of the property and its layout. But I uh, just wanted to clarify that trees are not permitted to be removed uh, for the installation of the walkway. Thank you. Um, Member Grogan Green. Yes. Um... So I just don't understand why a person wouldn't put another 12 feet on their own dock. Like, why does it have to be way over there near what looks to be um, some kind of a, you know, used to be perhaps a dwelling of some sort. Now it, it's a recreational platform or something. I don't, unclear what they're asking for, but I, if, if the elevations are so difficult going from the boathouse to that dock, why is it being placed there because normally as a committee of adjustment we make adjustments because of the lay of the land or what have you i don't i don't see any real justification other than uh having a uh you know a, a, i guess I, I can't remember what it's called but the township owns land next to it a road allowance um beside there why why is it going there i don't understand um mr allen would you like to attempt to answer that? Thank you, through you, Chair Bridgman. I, I don't think I have all of the answers that Miss um, Grogan Green would like. Um, I was prepared, I was presented a site plan that had a proposed dock. I had a chance to visit the site. I completed my planning analysis, uh, formed my recommendation, completed the application, and, and we're here today. I would say, and and further to Mr. Kennedy's comments, there is an existing pathway that does lead to approximately the location below the existing storage building. I did have the opportunity to walk the shoreline to the approximate location where the new dock would be. It is possible to walk there. I don't think it's it's possible to construct a six foot wide pathway that does not require the removal of any trees. And that's something that my client is going to have to contend with um, for the use of that dock. Okay, so member Grogan Green, are you? Good now? Yes, I think that that's answered. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other comments, committee? All right, I'm going to read the uh, resolution then. Be it resolved, I'm uh, moved by a uh, member Grogan Green, uh, seconded by member Stokes, be it resolved that application A-98 slash 21 Saunders to construct a new swim dock is hereby approved with the following variance being granted to permit a dock to be 87 feet in cumulative width. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any further discussion? All in favor? So have we got it carried there, Chelsea? I can't quite see. Yes, it has carried. carried. Okay, thank you. All right, carried. Okay, um, we'll move on then to our our next one, which is Crocker, and this is Miss Spees. Welcome, Miss Spees. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen.
thank you, Acting Chair Bridgman. Uh, the next application to be heard is minor variance application A0124 in the name of Crocker. The subject lands are known municipally as 1017 Cadaradris Crescent. Uh, I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 67 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the proposed minor variance application is to construct a detached garage at a reduced front yard setback. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 12 days in advance of this meeting and three comments have been received to date. Comments were received from Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official, stating no objection. Comments were also received from Tim Sopko, the township's manager of public works, also stating no objection. And lastly, comments were received from Douglas Holland, the township's fire prevention officer, listing fire response times and recommending that the applicants consult the Fire Smart Owners Manual to understand <clears throat> how treatments to the property influence wildfire spread. He also recommended that as construction will be occurring on the property, that we encourage pre-planning with the fire department concerning fire risks during this vulnerable phase of development. The proposed variances are summarized as shown on the screen. Uh, this table was included in the circulation materials and can be found in the agenda package as well. And staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved. Uh, staff have no further comments and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Ms. Mies. Uh, would the applicant or the applicant's representative be here to speak? Yes, Acting Chair Bridgman, we have um, a gentleman here. Okay. Welcome. Please just state your name and address and then go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Greg Bruce, agent for the Crockers. My address is 1936 Commerce Park Drive, Innisville, Ontario, L9S483. First of all, thank you to administration for working with us and supporting this application. Um, this really came about just because of the ir irregular shape of the lot and areas that had already been cleared. Um, I don't know if we can bring up the site plan again, would make it clearer for everybody. Is that possible? This really was a good example of all the checks and balances and everybody working together. So the original site plan that was submitted and the Crockers did have a permit approval for the uh, garage. And what ended up happening because of the, uh, the very irregular shape of the shoreline, and you can see how that really sticks out there, the, uh, the relief we're seeking at the 54 feet. Uh, if you go to the point on the peninsula there, it's probably about 120 feet away. Uh, and also because of the pie shape of the lot, what ended up happening on the original application was uh, if you have parallel lot lines, all you do is you mimic the shoreline and you bring it straight back and it's easy to reflect the 66 feet. But what ended up happening here because of the pie shape, uh, they took the shoreline and they brought it back and they threw the center as an average because it's not clear how to do that uh, with the bylaw. There was no diagrams for that. But because of this uniqueness, uh, it reflected that the boathouse location, as is now, that it actually was back to 66 feet, um, and that was approved. So when the Crockers actually had their contractor actually start building it and laying out the footings, they requested the footing inspection, and the building inspector went out and said, hey, this seems like it's pretty close. So then Dave reached out to me, and we spoke to the CBO, and uh, Nick and I had spoke, and we talked about how difficult it is to actually show an exact uh, set 66 foot setback on this law because it's so irregular. And so we decided that the best way to do that is to show a bunch of concentric circles on it, showing the 66 feet to give it kind of a better representation of it. And then we decided just in the top left, we actually paid a surveyor, Joe Topo, to come out with a GPS to find out the exact closest measurement to the, uh, to the waterfront. And that was discovered to be the 54 feet that we are looking for relief from. But I just want to take notice that it actually is 120 feet from that uh, outer peninsula. The other thing that's unique about this property is the septic is behind it and there's a required minimum setback from that. So when the contractor laid it out, 
They verified that. They verified the uh, required minimum setback to the side yard set line, site line, and uh, or yard line. My apologies. And then with the existing driveway, the building was actually rotated slightly from the original site plan uh, uh, submissions to make it easy to drive straight in, so that no other um, no other clearing or anything needed to be done. And it really made the most sense. And the other benefit that's coming from this, uh, if committee supports, and we hope you do is that the existing drive we went right down behind the existing boathouse and they used to park there regularly that won't be required now so environmentally that's going to be a little bit uh, beneficial as well too so no worries about leaching of any fluids or anything into the lake so we look forward to your support and questions and uh and uh, we thank you for your time Uh, thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak on behalf of this application? No. Anyone against? No. All right. Any questions, committee? All right. I'm going to read the motion then. Um, moved by Member Brown, seconded by Member Quinn. Be it resolved that application A-01-24, Crocker, be constructed uh, to construct a new detached uh, garage is hereby approved with the following variance being granted to permit a front yard setback to be 54 feet for a detached garage. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of the decision. Any comments? All in favor? Okay, that carries. Okay, so our next one up is Libfeld, and that would be you, Ms. Crowder. Welcome. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A1624 in the name of Libfeld. The subject lands are known municipally as 3864 Muskoka Road 118 West, unit number two. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 87 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to recognize an as-built carport, which exceeds the maximum permitted total lot coverage and lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance of this meeting, and four comments have been received to date. Comments were received from Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official, stating that the as-constructed carport was completed without the benefit of a building permit. If approved, a building permit will be required to be issued and inspections undertaken accordingly. Comments were received from Douglas Holland, the township's fire prevention officer, stating that the calculated fire response time is 11 minutes and 26 seconds based on the average shoot time of the fire department in the last 36 months and a travel distance of 4.1 kilometers from the fire station. The FireSmart homeowner's manual should be consulted to understand how treatments to this property influence wildfire spread. Comments were received from Ken Becking, the township's director of operational services, stating no objection to the application. Lastly, a comment was received from James Allen, director of the Muskoka Resort Club, or sorry, Muskokan Resort Club, Incorporated, located on the abutting property to the west, stating that the as-built carport was constructed by the previous owner of the property and that they support Mr. Libfeld, Libfeld's application to legalize the structure. The proposed variances are summarized as shown on the screen. This table was included in the circulation materials and can be found in the agenda package. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Crowder. Uh, would the applicant or agent, anyone want to speak on behalf of this? Uh, we have a gentleman approaching the podium. I see that now, thank you. Um, welcome and just give us your name and address first, please. Uh, 
my name is John Sibinick. I'm the agent. I reside at 24 Ovita Avenue, Tobico, Ontario, M9B1E1. Uh, the owner purchased the property in August 2020. There's, as the staff has mentioned, there is a uh, uh, as constructed carport um, that was constructed by the previous owner. It's about 425 square feet in area. Um, the requirement was to submit for a building permit. Um, and uh, But prior to that, we applied for a zoning review and we found out that there was there are two variances required, one for total lock coverage and the other one was within the 200 feet of the high water mark. Uh, coverage is 10.3% and 10.6%. Nominal amount, uh, the, the staff report has mentioned that it's, uh, it's an open area, so it's transparent. Um, no walls were constructed around the, the carport, so I think it's... Uh, within the uh, permitted 11%, I believe is the allowable uh, according to the Planning Act. Um, uh, I don't see any other, I have two letters of support from neighbors, one units one and three that I'd like to add and submit. Um, so I could do that. It's a unique property. Uh, I think it's been carefully laid out. It's on the high point. It's There's no issues with setbacks, um, no issues with distance to waterfront. And it is uh, a carport that is relatively close to the side property lines where there is further distance from the uh, shoreline as well. Um, I'd be happy to address any questions the committee has. Okay, thank you very much. Um, anyone else who would like to speak on behalf of this application? No. Anyone against? No. All right, uh, committee, any questions? All right, seeing none, I'm going to read the motion. Uh, moved by Member Stokes, seconded by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that application A 16 24 Libfeld to recognize an as built carport is hereby approved with following variances being granted to permit a lot coverage of 11,355 square feet, which is 10.3% over the area of the entire lot, and to permit a maximum lot coverage of 9,715 square feet, which is 10.6% within 200 feet from the high water mark. And these variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. And this approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of the decision. Any more discussion? All in favor? That carries. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and our next application is 821284 Ontario Inc. And Ms. Crowder, I believe that is also yours. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A1724 in the name of 821284 Ontario Inc., more commonly known as Portside Fusion. The subject lands are known municipally as 98 Joseph Street. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 104 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to recognize an as-built restaurant addition with a rooftop sun deck, which is located within the required front and side yard setbacks. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance of this meeting, and three comments have been received to date. Comments were received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, stating no objection to the application. Comments were also received from Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, stating that the calculated fire response time is 9 minutes and 48 seconds, based on the average shoot time of the fire department in the last 36 months, 
and a travel distance of 1.4 kilometers from the fire station. As construction will be occurring on the property, we encourage pre-planning with the fire department concerning fire risks during this vulnerable phase of development. Fire Smart Homeowners Manual should be consulted to understand how treatments to the property influence wildfire spread. Comments were also received from Ken Becking, Director of Operational Services, stating no objection to the application. The proposed variances are summarized as shown on the screen. This table was included in the circulation materials and can be found in the agenda package. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved subject to the following. That a satisfactory cash in lieu of parking agreement be entered into with the township and registered on title, along with payment, for the deficient parking spaces to accommodate the proposal. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, would there be the applicant or applicant's agent wishing to speak? Uh, no one is here uh, to speak on the application. Okay, uh, not for or and what about uh, anybody else supporting it? No. And against? No as well. Okay, uh, committee, any comments? All right, then I'm going to read the motion. Um, moved by member Quinn, seconded by member Brown, be it resolved that application A slash 17 slash 24, 821284 Ontario Limited to construct a restaurant addition with a rooftop sun deck is hereby approved with following variances being granted. One, to permit a minimum side yard setback of 8.5 feet from the southerly interior side lot line for a restaurant addition with a rooftop sun deck and to permit a minimum setback from the high water mark of 28 feet at the closest point for a restaurant addition with a rooftop sun deck. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following condition. that a satisfactory cash in lieu of parking agreement be entered into with the township and registered on title along with payment for the deficient parking spaces to accommodate the proposal. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any discussion? All in favor? That carries. Okay, our next one, again, Excuse I believe is you, Ms. Crow. Excuse me, um, Acting Chair Bridgman, will we be able to take a uh, break at this time? Certainly. All right, let's do a 10 minute break and uh, then we'll come back.
Okay, if we could get everybody back, that would be great. Okay, I think we're set to go. So, uh, Ms. Crowder, I believe you are up again with the Beaumaris Land Company Limited. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. The next application to be heard is Minor Variance Application A1924 in the name of Bomaris Land Company Limited. The subject lands are known municipally as 1197 Bomaris Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 122 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to construct an addition to an existing sports court within the required front yard setback and to recognize two as-built sports courts within the required front and side yard setbacks. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance of this meeting, and three comments have been received to date. Comments were received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, and Ken Becking, the Township's Director of Operational Services, both stating no objection to the application. Comments were also received from Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, stating that the calculated fire response time is 13 minutes and 46 seconds based on the average shoot time of the fire department in the last 36 months, and a travel distance of 2.3 kilometers from the fire station. The Fire Smart Homeowner's Manual should be con consulted to understand how treatments to the property influence wildfire spread. The proposed variances are summarized as shown on the screen. This table was included in the circulation materials and can be found in the agenda package. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved subject to the following. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into and registered on title, along with securities, for implementation of a stormwater management brief prepared by a qualified professional, retention of vegetation and plantings to retain and revegetate the shoreline buffer, and dark sky compliant lighting. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you. Would the applicant or I, Mr. Allen, welcome back. Yeah, thank you, Chair Bridgman. It's nice to see everyone again. Hope you had a nice break. Uh, my name is Ryan Allen. I'm representing the Beaumaris Land Company with the variants today. Uh, 104 Kimberly Ave, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1Z8. I do have a brief presentation that I would like to thank you very much. Uh, the subject lands are at 1197, however, uh, Bomaris Road. However, the, um, the land company has extensive land holdings on Tondred Island. We could go to the next slide, please. Oh, maybe we skip one, move her back. Thank you. Um, as uh, some of you may or may not know, uh, the Bomaris Land Company uh, has a significant uh, history in the township. Um, the Bomaris Hotel was one of the first hotels uh, that existed in the township, and I found an old um, an old ad. I would note that uh, this place is the best place on the continent for hay fever people. And uh, golf, tennis, boating and bathing and fishing have been um, occurring on this site. Uh, for more than 100 years. Uh, the cottagers found the Bomaris uh, Golf and Tennis Club back in 1911, and subsequently uh, the Bomaris uh, Yacht Club was founded by an American congressman the following year. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you, Ms. Crowder, for your review of the application, um, as well as your uh, supportive recommendation. The, the lands that are highlighted in orange are the, uh, the Bomaris Land Company's holdings, uh, you can see that they're substantial. There's over 167 acres on Tondred Island with over 660 feet of frontage. I believe that the um, the land company's holdings would make them the largest private landowner on the lake. Um, and I've provided an enlargement showing the location of the proposed variance. And we can go to the next slide, please. There is an existing uh, pickleball court as well as a proposed tennis court expansion as part of this application. And you'll see uh, there's three areas circled. I numbered one, two, and three. The first is the setback of the new tennis court addition at approximately 71 feet. 
the next is number two. This is the setback from the lake of the existing as built pickleball court at approximately 32 feet and then a 10 foot side yard setback uh, from the neighboring lot line for the existing pickleball court. I would note that the, um, the existing pickleball court, while it is built um, and uh, has some non-compliance issues with the, uh, the zoning bylaw, it was a former waste transfer site that was closed in 2017. This was the site that was used by uh, Bomeris uh, water access uh, islanders to bring their garbage back to the mainland. The district closed this site because it was problematic and unsupervised. Uh, in 2018, the pickleball court was installed. And I understand that the, the, the club believed at the time that they were in compliance with the bylaw when they undertook that work. It is flat level ground. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the location of the approximately 1300 square foot addition to the proposed existing court. You can see it kind of rounds out an existing edge. Uh, and it is in line with the uh, the current fencing for the pickleball court and is located on a level grass area. No trees are to be removed. Next slide, please. This is the existing pickleball court at just under 1,800 square feet. This is the as-built court, as I mentioned, and the location of the former district waste transfer site. Next slide, please. This is the location of the pickleball, pickleball court, excuse me, between the shoreline and the court itself. Um, based on my visit on the site, there was no appearance of any erosion, any runoff that was causing any um, pollution of the lake. Next slide, please. Possibly that's the end of my slides. Thank you. Um, the, we're, we're thankful that the staff is, is recommending support of the application. Um, I, I understand the club is willing to undertake some uh, plantings in the shoreline area around the existing uh, docks. Um, and we'll work with staff to um, to come up with a planting plan. With, with some questions or concerns about the uh, the degree of the stormwater management review, I had an opportunity to speak with some engineers uh, prior to the meeting, but I was unable to get letters from them. Um, they didn't agree that there would be any need to assess the existing courts themselves, particularly if they've been installed for you know, the better part of 20 years and that the, uh, the proposed uh, stormwater management review, uh, given the flat level terrain and the fact that the, uh, the courts are not used uh, for parking, they won't have any oils or grease, uh, sand or salt or silts that are located on them. The water coming off the courts will be clean. Uh, so there's, there's no issues with dealing with any kind of sedimentation um, and some some control controlling the edges of the court and the erosion around the the edge was kind of primary the primary uh, advice that I was receiving from the engineers, but I was unable to get a letter today. Um, so I think the the time is of the essence with this court. The club would like to start construction as soon as possible. So we're hopeful that we can work through the site plan agreement requirement and allow the the club to start construction and use it this uh, this spring as soon as possible. So if, if the committee would be willing to um, remove any of the uh, conditions for site plan approval, I think they would be they would be happy with that, but we would also accept um, the committee imposing those conditions as well. Um, the club does have an extensive amount of shoreline and an extensive land area. Um, the majority of that shoreline is naturally forested and well vegetated. I think there is some significant steward of uh, Tondren Island at over 50% of the land area. The club also does have an extensive uh, environmental program. I know that Peter Quattro and um, Scott McNichol are in attendance here today and they may wish to provide some additional insight. I look forward to um, any questions you have and I would hope that the committee approves the application today as recommended by staff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this? Uh, yes, we do have a gentleman in Zoom who has raised their hand. Okay. All right, we'll just wait till he comes in. So, Mr. Quattro, if you can hear me, could you turn on your camera, please, well, if will. you can? 
Uh, and uh, just state your, well, we've got your name, but and state your address, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Peter Quattro, and I live, uh, my residence is at 1168 Bomaris Road. So I, I live on Tondren Island. Um, I'm also a member of the Bomaris Yacht Club and uh, lead in the um, uh, tennis committee um, at the moment in, in, um, in, in um, doing this small project to convert uh, court six to, to allow us, <clears throat> excuse me, to allow us to have four pickleball courts. And um, I did want to take the opportunity to, uh, I, I believe Mr. Allen's covered it fairly well for us. Um, for the uh, past 20 years, I think uh, Bo Morris has had an environment committee um, chaired by Louise Craig, who's also very, very involved in the MLA. Uh, she has been responsible for water quality around Bo Morris, um, including the lagoon that we, which is the immediate uh, bit of water that um, that is south of our uh, tennis courts, and um, just to um, to enhance prior to the pickleball courts going in, that was a hard surface designed for trucks to come in and pick up the waste containers and so on. Um, so and and it was very messy, and that was a concern that our environment committee had as well. And uh, ultimately had those moved inland quite a ways away from the, uh, the water sources. Um, and uh, if you notice, when the pickleball courts did go in, there was a buffer of river rock that was uh, created. Uh, the, the hard surface of the road was reduced. And there's an additional buffer of um, grass and so on already that was done in the last few years. And, and the sole purpose was to, to um, make sure that, um, and Louise was quite involved in all of this because she was concerned that we, we didn't want any runoff whatsoever going into the lagoon. Um, the other important item is that uh, our, it's a very flat area, but the courts themselves, the majority of the water from our existing courts actually sheds uh, to the away from where we want to add a 10 feet. It is a 10 foot strip allowing us to be able to uh, relocate our fence out 10 feet. And, uh, but the water does shed the other way and not towards that roadway, the majority of the water. We, we certainly have a certain amount of water that comes down that roadway, but we do not have an erosion problem. It's, uh, it's, it's never had an issue. And if, and if there are issues, we correct them as um, our environment committee is, is very proactive with any projects that we do. And so I, I wanted to share that. Uh, Louise Craig is, wasn't able to speak today, but um, I did speak with her um, on the weekend and um, she will be involved. And as, as I, from an engineering standpoint, I'll, I'll coordinate the project and, um, and the environment group will be involved. And, and we do self-govern, if you will, to make sure that we protect um, the, uh, the, the waters, uh, especially around Tondren Island, although it's the whole Lake Muskoka. So thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Um, anyone else who would like to speak on behalf of this application? No. Anyone against? No. Okay, committee members, any questions? No, well, I, I do have one, Ms. Crowder. You are recommending the stormwater management because if you could answer that, that would be great. Thank you. Absolutely, through you, Chair Bridgman. Um, so in our uh, bylaws, the requirement for a sports court is 200 feet from the high water mark. The reason for this, um, there's a few reasons. Uh, first is that we, our official plan envisions that the first 50 feet of uh, along the shoreline should be a fully vegetated buffer. And that's for visual and environmental purposes. Um, and also second would be visual impact of sports courts. They typically require um, a lot of open space so they can have quite um, a visual impact when viewed from the lake. Um, in this case, the as-built pickleball court is about 31 feet from the high water mark. So that is a significant um, decrease in, in the required setback. So 
you know, we, an, another reason of the required um, 200 feet would be stormwater. I, th I would say that's a big, a big part of it. Sports courts are typically large, flat, impermeable surfaces. So, you know, water that any water that hits those surfaces um, essentially would, would result in sheet runoff. And um, it's important to understand where that water's going, um, how it's being diverted. And um, we would look to an engineer to tell us, you know, what, what are the impacts of this, of this court when so close to the water? Um, you know, the, the pickleball courts, the as-built ones, are about uh, 1,800 square feet in size. The proposed tennis court addition is about 1,300 um, square feet in size. But cumulatively, all the courts in that area um, exceed 22,000 square feet. So that's a that's a significant area of impermeable surface, and I think it's important for us to have um, the advice of an engineer to tell us, you know, where is this water going, and are there any negative impacts, and what recommendations can be put in place to um, alleviate any potential environmental impacts that may occur. Thank you. Okay, thank you, and I. I agree with you. I think it's our due diligence to do that. And Mr. Quattro, it sounds like you and your group are very involved in the environment. And I'm going to hope that nothing comes from this study in terms of you needing to do any more. Um, but that would be my my thoughts on that. Members, any other comments? Uh, Member Stokes. I just wanted to say that I agree with everything that you you said. I, I don't think we should go against staff's recommendation on this one. Okay. Anyone else? All right. I'm going to read the motion then. Uh, moved by Member Grogan Green, seconded by Member Stokes. Be it resolved that application A-19-24 Bomaris Land Company Limited to construct an addition to an existing sport court and to recognize two as-built sport courts is hereby approved with following variances being granted. One, to permit a minimum set setback from the high water mark of 70 feet at the closest point for a tennis court addition. Two, to permit a minimum setback from the high water mark of 31.5 feet at the closest point for as-built pickleball courts. And three, to permit a side yard setback of 9.5 feet from the easterly interior a side lot for as-built uh, pickle, pickleball courts. These variances are granted as indicated on the plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following condition. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into and registered on title along with securities for implementation of a stormwater management brief prepared by a qualified professional, retention of vegetation and plantings to retain and revegetate the shoreline buffer and dark sky compliant lighting. Any comments? All in favor? That carries. Thank you. Thank you, committee. That's the last of you see with me today. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Ms. Beamish, I believe you're up next, and that's 1450837 Ontario Inc. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. The next application to be heard is Minor Variance Application A-2024 in the name of 1450837 Ontario, Inc. The subject lands are known municipally as 1155 Evely Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 145 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to construct a building for use as part of a contractor's yard. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 18 days in advance of this meeting and three comments have been received to date. Comments were received from Ken Becking, the Township's Director of Operational Services, and Nick Schneider, the Township's Chief Building Official, both stating no objection to the application. Comments were also received from Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, providing emer emergency fire response times and recommending that the owners review the Fire Smart Homeowners Manual to understand how treatments to the property influence wildfire spread. The proposed variance, variances are summarized as shown on screen. 
This table was included in the circulation materials and can be found in the agenda package. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, would the applicant or applicant's agent wanting to speak? They are not present today. Okay, anyone for this application? No. Anyone against it? No. All right. Um, committee, any questions or comments? Then I will read the motion. Uh, moved by Member Brown, seconded by Member Quinn. Be it resolved that application A-20-24, 1450837, Ontario, Inc., to construct a building for use as part of a contractor's yard, is hereby approved with following variances being granted. One, to permit a side yard setback of 66 feet at the closest point from the southerly interior side lot line. And two, to permit a building to be set back within 1,310 feet from a property line containing a hauled sewage lagoon. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. And this approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of the decision. Any comments? All in favor? That carries. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Beamish, I believe you have our last application here. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. The last application to be heard is minor variance application 2124 in the name of Dorison. The subject lands are known municipally as 1182 Ash Forth Drive. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 165 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to construct a one-story dwelling addition with a walkout basement, a one-story garage with a walkout basement, and a one-story boathouse. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 12 days in advance of this meeting and nine comments have been received to date. Comments were received from Ken Becking, the Township's Director of Operational Services, and Nick Schneider, the Township's Chief Building Official, both stating no objection to the application. Comments were also received from Douglas Holland, the Township's Fire Prevention Officer, providing emergency response times, recommending additional fire prevention design details beyond the requirements of the Ontario Building Code, and recommending that the owners review the Fire Smart Home Owners Manual to understand how treatments to the property influence wildfire spread. Uh, additionally, six comments were received in support of the application from Bev McCann, Tyler Harris, Perry Roach, Michael Bateman, Joel Jackson, and Elizabeth Clark Colbeck and Leslie Colbeck, all stating no objection to the application. The proposed variance is summarized as shown on the screen. This table was included in the circulation materials and can be found in the agenda package. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the following, that the application be approved subject to the following, that a satisfactory, satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into and registered on title along with securities for retention of vegetation and plantings. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Hey, thank you. Uh, would the applicant or the applicant's agent be here to speak? Good morning. Oh, good good morning, Mr. Zerbach. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members of the committee. I'm Stephen Sherbach from Plantscape Inc., 104 Kimberly Avenue in Bracebridge, P1L 1Z8. I'm here today on behalf of the owners, Frank Dorson and Elizabeth Harding. Um, and uh, unfortunately, they I planned to be in attendance this morning, but uh, had similar uh, other meetings that they had to attend. They were hoping to, to catch on, but unfortunately, they're still tied up. So it's just me. Um, thank you very much um, to Ms. Beamish for the staff reports. Very clear, concise. I agree with her uh, policy review and the recommendation in front of the committee. Uh, just to reiterate a couple of key points, um, this proposal was approved uh, by the OLT through a settlement agreement with the township back in 2017. 
Uh, the owners have since sought to find a way to consider the construction of a small garage to be located to the rear of the property within an area that's already level and cleared of uh, vegetation, more of, of, of a driveway type area. Um, they were able to achieve this goal by simply reducing the size of the previously permitted development, um, more importantly, reducing the size of a um, single slip peak roof boathouse. So originally they, they have the rights to, to build a slightly larger one today. They have uh, chose to reduce that size um, together with uh, the re reduction to the size of the addition to the dwelling in order to uh, fulfill their goal to uh, build this garage. Um, basically what they're doing here is just shuffling the already approved additional permitted coverage so that it can be um, there in front for the, in the, at the back for the, gar the garage. With respect to the noted uh, condition, since the owners had previously agreed to submit a site plan application under this previous approval, they continue to have no concerns with this recommendation. The site plan application will include an appropriate landscaping plan uh, to be completed once the construction has uh, finalized. Thanks very much for the opportunity to speak to you today and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Uh, anyone else who would like to speak uh, for this application? No. Or against? No. All right. Uh, committee, any questions or comments? Um, Member Grogan Green. Um, I just want to double check that when we approve this, that the uh, OLT decision to allow for a larger boathouse is then sort of denied as part of this. I just want to make sure that's the case. And just to comment, I got to get one of get me one of these uh, two story garages with a walkout basement. These are awesome garages, I think. Um, using the elevation to get more storage underneath, I guess, is a fantastic idea. Um. Chair Bridgman, uh, Mr. Sharp will speak to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. I'll uh, <clears throat> provide an answer uh, to the question, but with respect to the uh, um, Ontario Municipal Board uh, decision, now the Ontario Land Tribunal, that uh, decision would continue. It is a zoning uh, bylaw amendment, and it runs with the, the land. There's no expiry on it. Um, so if committee approves this application, they'd have the option of utilizing that approval or um, the, the minor variance application that you're considering today. Thank you. Um, if I could, Mr. Sharp, I'm, now I'm unclear. They can't go, what, what was approved as in terms of lot coverage before? What, what did the OLT approve? Thank you, Chair Brid Bridgman. Um, yes, I should have clarified. So essentially, uh, the Ontario Municipal Board approved a specific coverage uh, footprint, and uh, that is all well and fine. However, the applicant has now decided to change their development plans to construct a, a smaller uh, boathouse and construct a, a garage. And that configuration footprint of the proposed lot coverage is different than what the uh, Ontario Municipal Board approved. And therefore um, the minor variance has been submitted. Um, the municipality historically has been quite uh, detailed with respect to their approvals, including lot coverage requests. And you will recall that uh, committee's notices of decision um, state that variances are approved as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. With respect to the Ontario Municipal Board decision, the wording of the bylaw that was approved by the board also follows our standard wording that we use with respect to site-specific bylaws, which is as shown in the location and extent. So in this case, again, because of the reconfiguration of the proposed development, um, the variance has been submitted. Thank you. Okay, you're going to have to help me a little bit further, Mr. Sharp. I guess what I'm asking following on Member Grogan Green's comment was, could they turn around and still put in the bigger boathouse under the OLT um, settlement and have what we approved today? That's where I am now unclear. So a, a minor variance is different than a site-specific bylaw and that a minor variance grants one-time relief in order to allow a landowner to proceed with applying for a building permit. 
uh, for whatever development uh, that is approved. A site-specific bylaw is different in the sense that it provides, you know, uh, in this case, lot coverage, a lot coverage approval, um, and there is no expiry on that approval. As I had said, it runs with the land. So my sense is, is if this variance is approved, the applicant has now changed their development plan. So they're going to proceed with the development that's approved by committee of adjustment. And it'll essentially, um, for lack of a better term, cancel out the previous um, approval um, because it'll be for a, a different lot coverage uh, footprint. So I think staff don't have any concerns with the technicalities associated between the two uh, approvals. And I would um, suggest that committee try not to get too far in the weeds with respect to those details. Thank you. Um, yeah, we just need to understand. I, at least I I do. So, okay. So we approve this. This is what they're going ahead with is my understanding. So any questions or comments from committee? Yeah, I would like to know if uh, if there's any plans for plumbing or or water in that building, uh, or if that could be restricted. You mean the garage, um, Member Quinn? Correct. Uh, Mr. Zerbach. Hi. Um, I have to look at the detailed plans, but it would be in accordance with your bylaws. I mean, um, of course, if, if there is, if your bylaws permit something, um, as a right, uh, you know, then I think they're, they're the plans I think are submitted with this, uh, application and in your, in your, um, agenda, I don't recall seeing it, but I, it's not to say that it's not there. I, I, I just don't know. Sorry. Um, I mean, looking at the plans, I don't see anywhere where plumbing could be situated. I don't see it. I mean, the structure is small. Um, you know, I don't think they're planning to have a washroom in there. Um, I, I, I think the short answer is I don't see it in the plans that are submitted with this application in front of you. But the other part of that is that we do permit washrooms in garages, so they would be permitted by right to have that. I believe assuming the septic can accommodate it right yes. and that would be a building um code issue right yes. correct correct okay any other questions All right then i will read the motion um moved by member stokes seconded by member grogan green be it resolved that application a slash 21 slash 24 dorison uh, to construct a one-story dwelling addition with a walkout basement a one storage garage with a walkout basement and a one story a boathouse is hereby approved with the following variants being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 2,824 square feet, which is 10.8%. Over the area of the entire lot, this variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and is subject to the following condition. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into and registered on title, along with securities for retention of vegetation and plantings to retain and revegetate the shoreline buffer. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any more discussion? Uh, Chair Bridgman, can you yes. uh, repeat the uh, total lot coverage? The total lot coverage is 2,845 square feet. Perfect. Thank you. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Any more discussion? All in favor? That carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we do not have any unfinished business at this point, nor no correspondence. Uh, any new business? No. All right, then. I am going to read the resolution um, to adjourn. Uh, moved by Member Quinn, seconded by Member Brown, be it resolved that the meeting adjourns at 10.47 a.m. All in favor? Okay, thank you everyone and have a really nice day. <laughs>